This is Kite Cutter TV with another presentation. We gotta talk about this. Okay guys, six injured when driver rams into protest against ICE in Manhattan. A black car hit several people marching in Manhattan in support of immigrant detainees on a hunger strike. A woman drove her car into a crowd of protesters in Manhattan just after 4 p.m. on Friday, injuring at least six people, the police said. A video posted on Twitter shortly after the incident showed protesters standing close to a black BMW sedan on 3rd Avenue with at least one of them slapping his windows. The car surged forward, flinging protesters to the ground, then sped through an intersection, striking more pedestrians, some on bicycles, with a sickening crunch, the video shows. Also, we got the Department of Labor this week finalized a rule change that allows a federal contractors to claim a religious exemption to discriminate against certain groups when making hiring decisions. Also, a Michigan judge says businesses can discriminate against gay, lesbian people. A judge's findings that the state's civil rights statutes do not forbid discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Thank you, Michigan judge, for separating the 60s civil rights movement from the LGBTQ ABC movement. Check this out. So these were protesters that were out here in solidarity with protesters in New Jersey. They are protesting the detainment of ICE detainees at the Bergen County Jail. In any case, they're here in Murrow Hill, marching up 3rd Avenue. They get here a couple of hours ago, and there's a black sedan, they say, that pretty much just gunned it from the east side of 3rd Avenue and shot straight across the intersection. I've seen the video. You can see this black sedan take off. The protesters say that several people got hit, and as we just heard you say, there were at least six or seven people that were taken to the hospital. Police immediately responded. We spoke with one of the protesters. Take a listen. We were here marching down 39th Street to raise awareness of the fact that ICE detainees at Bergen County Jail have been on hunger strike for 28 days. This is the 28th day. A car unprovoked with murderous intent ran through a protest, hit like six people. There was a line of uh, protesters on bikes to stop traffic so that they would know that there are people on the street. They drove through those people on the bikes and then hit six people. So you, you know if you're driving into a crowd of 40-something people what your intent is. So the sedan was stopped up the block. The police are presumably in touch and have taken the driver, and the female driver, we're told, and I was questioning that driver at this hour. The protesters have since left this intersection, marching to the hospital where they believe uh, their fellow protesters were be are being cared for uh, after several of them uh, were struck by this car that went through the intersection during the time of this protest. We are live in Murray Hill this evening. Jay Dow, PIX11 News. A West Michigan man picked up by ICE four months ago has been released from their custody. He contracted COVID-19 behind bars in Calhoun County, and now he's in need of more medical attention. News 8's Donovan Long has this story for us tonight. You are heading right now to go pick up your husband. How are you feeling? I am. I'm very excited. Very happy, very thankful. Arlene Serum takes us on her ride to get her husband from the ICE Detention Center at the Calhoun County Correctional Facility. Seriously, like my heart is like exploding. She says her husband, Oscar Serum Sanchez, and their two little girls will be a family again, just in time for the holidays. Even more special because it's right before Christmas. The American Civil Liberties Union of Michigan helped free Serum Sanchez following his four-month stay behind bars. The agency filed a lawsuit against ICE in April and has since been working to free medically frail detainees like Serum Sanchez from the Calhoun County Correctional Facility. And people are in very great danger. It is a place where loved ones say Serum Sanchez contracted COVID-19 in a place with a history of a coronavirus outbreak. There are three families being reunited today. Um, as a result of this case, there have been about approximately 40 families that have been reunited. As Serum journeys down the road with her husband and their children in mind, God answer our prayers. she looks ahead to new beginnings, leaving their past in her rear view. It's a good feeling. Donovan Long reporting. Mm -hmm. We ask for consideration of Madeline's condition that they follow the advice of the doctors. She has more appointments that are scheduled past her deportation date. Right. She can't very well come back from Guatemala for her appointments. We asked for a year, and we asked that they read the papers, that they read all the letters that all of you have sent, 
is that they respond to the prayers of God's people and show some mercy for a family in need of mercy. Amen. Status of the DACA program could still be up in the air. The program recently restored following a judge's order last week. But its future could rest on a lawsuit filed right here in our state. Here's Channel 5's Thumbi Verma. The uncertainty of DACA has taken a toll on many dreamers, not sure whether they could be deported in the future. Every day I think of if we have to leave our home, a place that is ours. Now Hernandez is concerned about a legal battle that started two years ago, right here in Texas. Originally, Texas was joined by six other states, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Nebraska, South Carolina, and West Virginia, in a suit against the federal government looking to force it to end the program. Other states have since joined in the suit, and the next hearing is set for December 22nd. The Mexican-American Legal Defense and Educational Fund is representing the Dreamers. So one outcome could be that the judge agrees with us that the states have failed, the plaintiff states have failed to show any kind of injury at all resulting from DACA, uh, and the judge dismisses the case for lack of standing. Uh, another possible outcome is that the judge decides that the questions of DACA's legality require a trial. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton filed the original suit, his website saying, President Obama used DACA to rewrite federal law without congressional approval. Our lawsuit is vital to restoring the rule of law to our nation's immigration system. Then, when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled to uphold the DACA program this past June, he released another statement that said in part, we look forward to continuing litigating that issue in our case now pending in the Southern District of Texas. Paxton also claiming dreamers put strain on the economy. The defendants disagree. There is zero evidence in this case of funds being spent by states on DACA. As for Hernandez, he's worried that if he loses DACA, he'll lose his restaurant license. That means his employees would also suffer. My restaurant is providing jobs for families, people who don't have anything. Perales does say that no matter what happens in the hearing on the 22nd, things could ultimately change again under the incoming administration. Thunvi Verma, Channel 5 News at 6. This week, a Michigan court of the claims judge ruled a business can deny service to LGBTQ customers based on religious reasons. Attorney General Dana Nessel vowed to appeal. 13 year side's Elena Holland has a reaction from local advocacy groups. So this judge ruled that businesses could refuse service to members of the LGBTQ community because the State Civil Rights Act, that's the Elliott Larson Act, does not include sexual orientation. But some Michigan groups say that needs to change. It's just frustration because this is a fight we've been fighting for a long time. The court case centered around a wedding business that denied working with a same-sex couple for religious reasons. The judge ruled the Elliott Larson Act does not stop discrimination against someone based on sexual orientation, citing a previous case as precedent. I mean, it just continues the same narrative that we're less than and that, you know, for some reason, other people feel like they can determine who is okay to be discriminated against. Jazz McKinney is the interim director for the Grand Rapids Pride Center. They say the fact the discussion about who can be discriminated against is itself the problem. Me, it's mind boggling. Attorney General Dana Nessel plans to appeal the ruling. The director of another West Michigan group out on the lakeshore says there have been some positive change this year for inclusivity, but more needs to be done. Recently had Holland's non-discrimination ordinance passed at the state level. That's kind of the next thing where we want to make sure that people can't be discriminated against outside of Holland as well. The ruling this week did, however, also include a win for LGBTQ inclusivity. It ruled the word sex in the Elliott Larson Act included gender identity. Nessel commended this part of the court's decision. Equality Michigan's executive director also said in a statement, this part of the ruling is an important, if incremental, win for equality. The group called upon lawmakers to pass laws ensuring LGBTQ Michiganders protection by the state's civil rights laws. But for McKinney, they say it's tough to be happy about one half of this decision. What that is saying to me is it's not okay to discriminate against me because I'm trans, but it's okay to discriminate against who I love. Elena Holland, 13 on your side. Thanks for watching. 
Like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, God bless. Peace.